Welcome to the Akagi Mahjong Soul special collaboration live stream. This live stream is organized by Yostar and supported by Reach Mahjong of New York. I'm going to be one of your hosts today. My name is Ari, and together with me is Tips. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. I'm excited. <laughs> me too. I'm so excited. So, my name is Ari. I'm a VTuber. I stream ranked and friendly Mahjong on Twitch. As you can see there on the link. And I also do tournament commentary and tournament organization. I've been playing Mahjong for three years. My favorite Yaku is Seven Pairs. And hello, my name is Tips and Tricks. I'm an English Ricci commentator and player. I've been playing all different kinds of Mahjong for a year, uh, a decade now, <laughs> including Ricci Mahjong, mostly recently. Actually, online, it's definitely easier to find Ricci Mahjong than other kinds. But I also commentate and play in tournaments, which is pretty cool. You may have heard us and other people as well from the previous Yostar Cat Food Bowls and other tournaments. I stream regularly on Twitch as well at that link, tips and tricks. But I suppose that is enough about us. That's not really what you came here for, right? Right, so let's introduce Mahjong Soul to everyone, as some of you might not be players yet. So Mahjong Soul is an online Mahjong game where you can easily play Mahjong together with cute characters. You can assign out some decorations, including the tile back and special effects. You can raise your favorite Janchi, and you can play Mahjong for fun with players from all over the world. That's right, speaking of my favorite Janchi, Mahjong Soul has so many options. I think mine personally is Sara, the dancer from Cassiopeia. Each Janji has their own backstory and lore, and some of the main characters even have their own visual novel attached to them. Right, another really cool thing that I really like about Mahjong Soul is that it's so approachable to new players, and I always recommend it when people tell me that they don't know quite how it works, but they want to get into it. Yeah, that's true. I suppose when you've been playing as long as I have, you tend to forget just how difficult it is at the beginning. I know learning all the rules of Reach Mahjong, how to score it, and all of the other little ins and outs is extremely difficult. Mahjong Soul has a great tutorial. It has a lot of modes to help teach new players. And of course, it does not allow you to chombo. That is, to make a move that would destroy the game and take a penalty of a lot of points. Right, and yeah, that's why I really like it too. But let's return to the topic at hand. As the name says, this live stream is a special live stream about the Akagi and Majung Soul collab. So later we're going to be offering you guys detailed previews of the collab event. So stay tuned. At the same time, to celebrate the special live stream, we're going to be giving out three Washizu Mahjong sets through a lucky draw. To participate, all you guys have to do is follow and retweet or share this giveaway post from the Twitter at MahjongSoul underscore EN or on the Facebook page at MahjongSoul EN to qualify for the giveaway. And the event period is going to be from the 20th of October to the 27th of October until midnight, UTC-7. That's right. And you so later today, you guys should be able to see the tweet and the post on Facebook, and you should be able to follow and retweet or share it in order to get your chance at this Washizu set here. You can see the Akagi and Washizu brand on that box, as well as a little booklet inside teaching you how to play, and some transparent tiles fully shrink-wrapped there to make sure not even a speck of dust is on them. I, and like you said, you have the booklet to learn how to play too, and we're gonna be showing you guys later too. And I hope you guys participate and we look forward to it, because can you imagine having this? You're gonna be the coolest Majin player ever. anyone knows, honestly. That's right, it looks amazing. All that, all that shine there, you can feel like you're in Washizu's mansion. <laughs> so, let's introduce some details of the collab. So as we said before, this is going to be a collab between Akagi and Mahjong Soul. So some of you guys might be familiar with Akagi, but some of you might not. So let's give a brief introduction of Akagi. So Akagi, the genius who descended into the darkness, is the most famous among a series of Mahjong mangas written by the Japanese manga artist Nobuyuki Fukumoto. Serializing between 1992 and 2018, 36 volumes are available in total. The work is a spin-off prequel of Fukumoto's earlier work, Ten, Nice Guy on the Path of Tenho, 
and tells the tales of young mahjong genius Shigeru Akagi, whose older version debuted in 10. So Akagi is this legendary manga um, that, honestly, if you've Try to look up any manga or anime about Akagi. You must have uh, about Manjo. You must have seen Akagi, right? That's right. I think it might actually be very difficult to say something that the viewers haven't heard before. But for those of you who are not quite as familiar with Fukumoto's works, Akagi may be the most legendary. And one of the things I do appreciate about Akagi and Ten, really. I uh, I got into Akagi first, probably due to its fame, and I never realized that Ten was actually written before Akagi. When I found out that it featured an older Akagi, I just assumed that it was a sequel because it was less popular, but actually Ten was Fukumoto's previous work. Um, but between them, Fukumoto really focuses on the Mahjong. A lot of other anime and manga, and even other TV shows, live action TV shows, that focus on games like Mahjong or chess or sports or things like that, often will just use it as a vehicle to tell their story without actually putting in any sort of juicy situations in the game or any details, but Fukumoto goes in the exact opposite direction. And the, the story of Akagi and the way that the scenes are displayed are definitely Mahjong first. A lot of, a lot of the scenes are written in a way that mm -hmm. For Mahjong players, they get a lot out of it by analyzing the situation and realizing just how tense the characters are bouncing off each other and how tense the situation is. It's on a knife's edge. That's right, and Akagi also has the anime adaptation and several live adaptations too, so there's a lot out there to to watch and, 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 and read. And yeah, there's a lot of Mahjong is really focused on extreme situations and how those affect Mahjong, right? So it's really cool. And in fact, the longest part of the manga is the Washizu Mahjong arc, where Shigeru Akagi fights the owner of the impossible good luck, Iwao Washizu. The special version of Mahjong in the manga, that is Washizu Mahjong itself, you know, created by Fukumoto, but in the manga by Washizu. It's played with transparent tiles that you saw earlier, and yeah, it's really popular to the point where people made sets in real life and played it in real life, so they went all the way to replicate it in real life to just to play it. That's called quotas. Yeah, and that is just a, a statement to just how much Fukumoto cares about the Mahjong. That essentially this variant that appeared in his manga, actually, first of all, it has solid enough rules to be played as an actual game. And second of all, it has enough interest and it brought enough people to be interested in it that you know, tiles have been manufactured for it and sold. Yep, and that's the kind of set you could win. So yeah, participate. And also this time, we also have a specially made trailer just for today and we're gonna be showing it here for the first time. So yeah, let's watch it together, shall we? Oh, I can't wait to see more anime. Yes. Yes. その Wow, so that was a really cool trailer. We got to see it here first together with everyone. And wow, so Ichihime was there just playing Mahjong normally with Yui and everybody else. And suddenly, lightning struck. Washizu and Akagi were there. That was so cool. Yeah, that was really interesting. You could see Ichihime was a little bit out of her element. She was wondering what these hands were that weren't Tanya. Trying to remember all the Yaku, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the transparent tiles too. I wonder if she got used to it fast enough to uh, compete with the, with the, uh, Washizu and Akagi who were there too. And it's very interesting seeing the the animation styles uh, meshing together like that. The, uh, they had the 3D art style for the tiles and the Richie sticks too, just like in the anime. That was very cool. And 
that together with Ichihime in 2D was very interesting. That's right. I really felt the genuine atmosphere, you know, those those trademark tiles going across the whole tile read. Definitely felt like it came right out of the Akagi anime, as well as the narrator. The narrator sounded really authentic to the anime. Mm -hmm. And they were playing that, that special version of Mahjong that we were talking about just now from, from, the, from the manga. And they had the transparent tiles, they had the black gloves too. I wonder what those are for. Hmm. That is very interesting. So the black gloves are actually one of the famous equipment used in Washi's and Mahjong. Obviously the set gets the most attention, but because of these legendary specialist Mahjong players like Akagi and Washizu, they can feel the tiles just by touching them with their thumb. And so the wall is hidden in Washizu Mahjong because because of all the transparent tiles, they would be able to see the next tile that they're drawing. So by throwing all the tiles into a black opaque container or bag, that prevents the players from seeing it, but that does not prevent the players from feeling which tile they're going to draw next. And so they wear these black rubber gloves to remove that feeling from their thumb. Um, ah, I see. I can definitely see how those players of that caliber could be able to feel the tiles, right? Because they are uh, imprinted onto the face of the tiles, so you can actually feel, I don't know, if you guys have played with real tiles, yeah, they, they, you could tell, and there's some players who are good enough for that can feel the tile when they pull it. So very interesting attention to detail there by Mr. Fukumoto. That's right. And I'm wondering if Ichihime could do that as well as the caretaker of the Mahjong Soul Shrine. Hmm. I have faith Maybe. in her. I have faith in her unbreakable spirit. I mean, she does have the, the rubber gloves on and the trailer too. And yeah, this trailer along with its Chinese and Japanese versions are going to be released soon. So you can watch them at any time. So please stay tuned. And the characters who just now appeared in the trailer are actually going to be added to the game. So let's introduce the long-awaited collab characters for the first time. <laughs> the first one that we're going to be showing is Washizu. So here you can see on the left Washizu's normal outfit and on the right the Max Bond outfit that you can get. How disrespectful. Don't young people nowadays have any manners? Right, Washizu quote there. <laughs> Yeah, he's very much that kind of uh, an Oji-san, if you will, Oji-san. You can see here he's got the black and red fire coming out of his rubber glove, showing his impossibly good, and maybe even demon-blessed luck, as it's called in the anime. He's got his nice regal overcoat and under vest with a nice gold lining on it. As well as dress pants and dress shoes, you know, you have to fill out the accoutrement. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah, he's got that grin on his face with his hair slicked back. And Washizu is actually one of the most expressive characters in the anime. You know, in sort of contrast to Akagi, Washizu even wears his heart on his sleeve when he's playing Mahjong. You don't normally expect a pro Mahjong player to do that but he simply relies on his luck to get him through. And you can see that in his emotes as well. Mm, that's right, you can see those emotes there. We got the, I mean, all of them have different expressions of greed, uh, smug, he's, he's, you can see him in despair there on the third one. Very expressive, like you said, and you can see the grin on the art as well there. He's uh, very excited to be playing with Shizu Majo because he's got the glove on, right? He's about to play. Um, that's right. But, but here on the right, on the Maxmon outfit, you can see him, he's more relaxed. Uh, he's on his uh, um, kimono or more casual clothes, it seems. He's holding his cane. He's still got that expression, that grin, uh, almost as if you just arrived at his mansion and you're about, he's about to invite you to play with Shizu Mahjong. That's right. We have a few nice details, you know, he's got his crest on that overcoat there. And... He really, this reminds me of the pose when his mansion doors first open and we don't know exactly what's about to happen. He's uh, ready to talk to the youngsters now. And a little, a little effect that may not be noticed at first glance is that underneath him, we can sort of feel the aura of the demons of the underworld coming up around him. You can see those black flames. They almost look like tree roots, actually. 
Mm, I, I, yeah, I can, I can see that. And yeah, maybe that's just a warning of his extreme demonic luck, ready. So maybe you should be careful, even though he seems more casual, you still have to be wary of Oshizu. And even on his Zemo, you can see the, the run, the, the super expressive run, run, run. The legendary run. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, now that we have introduced Washizu, we are now going to introduce um, the other character that's going to be in this collab. So who else could it be than Shigeru Akagi himself, right? How could we have the Akagi collab without Akagi? You guys knew what's coming. So you can see him here, Shigeru Akagi. You can just call me Akagi. He's very humble, he's ready to play, he's in a casual outfit this time. On the left you can see his normal outfit, on the right the Max 1 outfit, of course. And yeah, it's very, very cool and ready to play. Yeah, so you can see this looks like Akagi, you know, it almost could be a disguise he's ready to take on Washizu so he needs to take on the appearance of a naive youngster just like all the other youngsters that Washizu fought in his mansion but we can see Akagi is no naive youngster he's got that flame of blue coming from the tile he's ready to play and he's got the glove on already I wonder what's in his pocket actually hmm I wonder I wonder what's in his pocket you're right of course he's not one for formalities Shigeru Akagi just call me Akagi. Yeah. <laughs> and on the right, we can see him here. He's um, way more fancy than on the left. He's wearing a suit, a red undershirt. He's got the dress pants, the dress shoes, the whole set. And he's got his phone sitting on the office chair, um, cigarette on. He's very, very relaxed, it seems. Although he still has that aura of confidence, right? That's right. He seems to have, you know, taken in the world of Mahjong, grown up a bit, and played his position, so to speak. Now he's, he's known as the genius of Mahjong, and he's ready to make sure everyone else knows it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Akagi, you know, the rival, the... The rival of Washizu, or I guess Washizu is Akagi's greatest rival. They're go both gonna be here. And Akagi with his genius and bravery and courage can see in game who who's gonna beat each other. <laughs> That's right. And we can see in Akagi's emotes in contrast to Washizu's. You know, he, he doesn't open his mouth in any of them. He looks almost deadpan, but you can feel the different you know, you can feel the aura. Akagi doesn't need to speak to let you know that he's winning and ready. That's right. And wait, um, are, are, are you hearing this too, Tims? Oh, hold Is on. it just me? I think, I think there's some noise leaking into the stream. Let me check with production. Message? Wait, um... Oh, no, I'm supposed oh. to play it? Okay, okay. Production's got something for you guys. Let's see what it oh. is. Let's see it. あ、皆さんこんにちは。楽しく楽しくぜひ
So wow, those were the messages of none other than the voice actors of Iwawa Shizu, Mr. Masane Tsukayama, and the voice actor of Shigeru Akagi, Mr. Masato Hagiwara. And yes, as you heard them, they're going to be voice acting Washizu and Akagi, of course, just like the anime. So wow, that's so exciting. Yeah, that's that's I'm shell shocked a little bit, you know? I feel like I'm in the presence of Mahjong royalty here. Thank you very much, Mr. Sukayama and Mr. Hagiwara, for lending your voices to Washizu and Akagi here at the Akagi Mahjong Soul collaboration. You know, they had a lot of interesting things to say. Mr. Sukayama, you know, he they're both really good Mahjong players. A lot of times voice actors may not do all the things that their characters because voice actors have such a vast role of characters but they're both mahjong players themselves mr sukiyama talking about how mahjong can keep the brain from aging and that it's a lot of fun well yeah that's true i mean if you play mahjong you're always thinking about what to discard and everything and yeah, like he said, it can prevent aging. So that's very cool. Uh, we have the legends themselves, legendary voice actors, Mr. Tsukayama and Mr. Hagiwara. They're going to be voice acting the characters in Majoran Soul. So yeah, if you max bond the characters after getting them with the luck they have given us, uh, you too can hear all the voice lines that are going to be added into the game. You got the classic voice lines from Akagi and Washizu, and of course some other ones that you might not have heard in the anime. That's right, as Mr. Hagiwara said, you want to raise hell in Mahjong Soul with Akagi, and the best way to do that is to have all his voice lines and get him to max bond so you can enjoy Mr. Hagiwara's smooth voice in battle. Oh, I, I, I hope I got them. They gave us, they gave us our luck. Maybe we should give our luck to all the people who are watching right now, so that they too can get Akagi and Washizu. That's right. That's the least we can do. Mhm. Mm okay. So, thank you very much, Mr. Tsukuyama, and thank you very much, Mr. Hagiwara. And now we're going to release even more information about the two characters. So I hope you guys are excited for their outfits. So here we can see Washizu. This is his outfit that you're going to be able to purchase. The showdown of light and shadow. Of course, Washizu is the shadow. <laughs> the undisputed ruler of the three worlds, the emperor of darkness. That's right. Here he is. We can see he's in a real power pose here. This is a little more of a fantastical outfit. The artist has been given the liberty to you know, go wild and show Washizu's true power, his energy. We can see the blue circle of strength on his feet. He looks extremely ready for almost battle. I mean, Mahjong is a battlefield, but they took it literally here. He's got the souls of the fallen behind him, as well as this eagle on his shoulder. That's pretty interesting. Right, he's got the eagle on his shoulder, um, almost like the... Uh, um martial arts movies the classic ones that we have all seen and he's even his pose i mean like those, those hands open it feels like they're the eagle's claws you know as if he's the eagle himself he's got that eagle spirit and um something that i learned recently is that the characters for washizu actually mean eagle's nest so that's a pretty cool detail there that they got the eagle for washizu that's right so maybe he is the eagle and we've also got the soul lantern behind him i guess that's where all the skulls are coming from yeah, it's almost like he's coming from the underworld to battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's still got the gold, the gold outlines, the gold accoutrement down the sides and outside of his overcoat here. So very interesting. Yeah, it's a very, very pretty outfit. And you're gonna be able to get this in game, and of course, if Washiz is the eagle, let's look at Akagi. So we got here Akagi, and he's got this. Pose. Um, I guess what well, she's with the eagle and Akagi is the dragon, the unparalleled Manjung genius, the dragon of light. And it's a very powerful pose. Again, like you said, he's got his fists back, his hands out, almost as if that's the dragon's mouth itself. That's right. That fist is the very, it's very appropriate for like a martial arts form it's a power stance there you can see his legs are apart he's wearing the the more baggy martial arts pants and he's got 
the classic vest. He's the master of Mahjong, and he's about to mm -hmm. take it to you on the battlefield. The dragon's mouth coming out of his right hand there. Right, and, and the dragon's mouth is actually, he's holding a towel, so it looks like if you get run by him, it's almost like you're getting hit by the dragon. <laughs> That's right. And he's also got the emote there with the fist, like so yeah, he's ready for battle. And yeah, he's also looking very regal. Yeah, I mean, both these outfits can sort of remind me that when you get into the right situation in Mahjong, it can feel just as tense as a fight. You're trying to outthink your opponent, you're trying to outmaneuver them, you're trying not to get hit, and you're trying to hit them for 8,000, 16,000, 32,000 points. <laughs> right, maybe with the dragons you get the big tree dragon, huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so that was the character info. We got the outfits, the voice actor. We got these characters, of course. They're going to be awesome to play as. But can you believe it? We actually have more information for you guys. So we have the patch trailer here ready. So why don't we watch it together, Tips? All right, let's set the stage for the Night of Legends. ガキシゲル。赤木でいい。なんて見とうないそうだな。だからこそ今時の若者は憎い。リーチ。ロ。So yeah, just like the trailer showed, not only do we get all of that that we've already talked about in the new patch, we're also going to have special Akagi collab decorations so you can feel like you're there in the Night of Legends. That's right. So first we put in the main characters, we dress them up nicely, and now we have to set the stage. The anime cannot be complete without a good sound stage and some good backgrounds. We can see here we've got the Richie bet, that blood syringe, when your life is on the line. We also got the Richie, the flames of the underworld. When you declare Richie, you put down the Richie bet and the flames of the underworld come so you can get that lucky sumo. That's right. And then limited time as well. The winning animation, the whispers from hell, the legendary Zaha, Zaha, Zaha. You saw it in the trailer <laughs> there. Yeah, so when you run, you're gonna the opponents are gonna hear sa -wa -sa -wa, and they're gonna see that manga and flash and they're gonna be so in despair. <laughs> and um, on the bottom here we also have Tileback, the crass of full vultures, the Majong set, almost like it's uh, Washizu's most precious Majong set with the gold ornament, two vultures on the back. Yeah. And and last but not least, we've got the tablecloth setting the stage for the Night of Legends. The lightning striking down on the building, signifying that a very tense Mahjong match is about to start. So here we have five new collaboration decorations for the Akagi Mahjong Soul collaboration. How do you feel about them, Irie? I I love them. I don't know which one's my favorite. I want them all. <laughs> Um, I love collecting the tablecloths and the tilebacks, but all of these are so amazing. I just, I just want them all. Yeah, the way this tileback looks, you know, Washizu has his luxurious treasure vault. It looks like this one Mahjong set is worth more than me. <laughs> but I, I can't wait to... 
I can't wait to bring Zala to my games of Mahjong. Honestly, when I get that, I'm never taking it off because it is so cool. <laughs> That's right. So, yes, so we're gonna have all the characters, the voice actors, collaboration, uh, decorations, and as you guys might have seen, I see you guys talking in the chat. You're right, we're also going to have Washizu Mahjong Battle of Clairvoyance. You guys are gonna be able to play it during this collab. So you get to play the Washizu Mahjong just like in the manga. In addition, another special Mahjong mode called Yami Mahjong, which is being used in Mr. Fukumoto's currently serializing manga, Yami Mahjong Fighter, Mamiya. It's also going to be added to Mahjong Soul for a limited time, so please stay tuned and look forward to these very cool game modes. Yeah, I think it's amazing that we're getting not only one, but two new game modes. I can't wait to test these out against my friends and maybe even some people who aren't quite my friends. That way I'll be able to play harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun playing all these game modes because we're being spoiled. Spoiled. We're getting so much. We're getting two game modes, voice actors, characters, outfits, everything. So that was the information on the collab event. So please follow Majong Soul's official Twitter and Facebook uh, on uh, ma at Majong Soul underscore en for the Twitter and at Majong Soul en for the Facebook. And there is also a Discord community that you can join at discord.gg slash MahjongSoul. And there you can keep up to date with all the collab details and anything else in the future. And you can even play Mahjong with some, some friends. You can meet some people, play Mahjong. I used to play there a lot and met some really cool people. That's right. You can find a lot of people to play with and talk about Mahjong Soul and Mahjong in general in the Discord and Facebook groups as well as keeping up to date. All so, right. oh. next, we're gonna have tips, the demonstration match, right? I guess you're all wondering why we were using this transition image. Well, of course, since it's Akagi, we will be playing Washizu Mahjong live for you here on stream. We have a demonstration match today with four players from Reach Mahjong of New York. I have personally played with them, so I can vouch that today is going to be a great game. Our players are... Molly, playing as Sophia545. We've got Claire playing as Thursday. We've got Pio playing as Pio. No surprise there. And Everett playing as Mr. Hat. But one other thing we do need to say we actually have some very interesting commentators for this match today. Commentators. Commentators. Their names are Irie from Iron TV and Tips from Tips and Tricks. <laughs> That's right, it's us. We will be commentating Washizu Mahjong. So stay tuned and we will be sure to give you the tips so you can get ahead of the competition when the game is released, as well as pointing out some of the parts of Mahjong Soul that really lend themselves to Washizu Mahjong. Alright, so since we're going to be playing Washizu Mahjong, some people might not be familiar with the rules. C could we can you get us some help for that? Alright. So here in Mahjong Soul, the lobby will be called the Battle of Clairvoyance. We do use the same special Mahjong tiles. There are four sets, there are four copies of each tile in a regular Mahjong set, and it's the same way in Washizu Mahjong, but three of the four are transparent, so that means one copy of each tile is normal or opaque. Ooh, Just I as in the manga, there are no red fives as well as no multiple roan, that is, head bump or a tamahane is on if two players win at the same time. The player who is next in turn order will get the win. The other players will unfortunately just have to wait for another hand to win. This is to keep in line with the rules of the anime. There are actually a couple of very interesting situations where it comes into effect. Now, for the Mahjong Soul iteration of Battle of Clairvoyance, you can auto-arrange your hand in the same way and the normal and transparent tiles will be arranged 
as a normal hand would be. However, other players, even if you arrange your hand, they will still see all your transparent tiles on the left and your normal tiles on the right. So if you ever attempt to play it in real life or on different places, then you will know that it can be very difficult to put it together. It can be very difficult to order and arrange your hand while also hiding what your normal tiles are from your opponents. And with Mahjong Soul, that is all taken care of for you. You can arrange your hand, you can look at it very clearly and easily, and it will not affect how easy it is for your opponents to read your hand. Oh wow, that's that's pretty handy, I guess. That helps a lot. Yeah, so that is pretty cool. And indeed, you can see all the other players' transparent tiles. A lot of times, if you are looking at tiles sideways, it is very difficult to see what the tile is. Even if it's transparent, the edges, the way the light refracts off the tile, you know, it's it can be difficult. But in Mahjong Soul, there is a projection on the table and you will be able to see the tiles very clearly. It's a little difficult to explain, so you'll see what I mean when we get into the game. And lastly, when you call for a Chi or a Pwn, you can use the normal tiles or you can use the transparent tiles. Obviously, a lot of times you do not want to reveal what the normal tiles in your hand are, so you should call with the transparent tiles. But perhaps there's a mind game or a little trick you want to play on your opponents. Maybe you want to make them think your weight is over here when it's really over there and you're actually tempi. Maybe you want to bluff that you're tempi when you're not. And you can use the normal tiles if you would like. Mm, I see. So, yeah, I can definitely see how you could use that for some bluffs and, and shenanigans. So this is going to be a very interesting battle. And All right, so... We are about ready to begin. I would just like to remind everyone that the Battle of Clairvoyance is currently in a testing situation right now. This is not the official version, so there may be some bugs in the game. However, the current effects are for display only, in-game, they should be ironed out. So thank you for understanding, and let's get into it. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, and here it is, live and on stream. Alright, so we've got Sophia in the east spot playing Akagi here with those new fresh Akagi emotes. We've got Pio playing Ichihime in the south seat. We've got Washizu across the table, Mr. Hat in the west seat. And we've got Thursday playing Wanjiro in the north seat. You can see Sophia off to a very quick start. A lot of her tiles are transparent though, so I wonder if the other players will be able to avoid this 4-7 pin weight right now. Hmm, so yeah. Sophia's not yet in Tempai, but when she does get there, um, I can see it being tricky with this 4 with the opaque tiles, so from the other players' perspectives, I don't know if they even realize that she's this close to Tempai. That's right, and we can see the projection of the tiles that were mentioned in the rules. They're pretty clear. It's actually somewhat difficult to read the actual tiles themselves, so it's great that there's a projection for easy reading for all of your opponents. Mm, speaking of the tiles, they look very nice. You can see through them, but you can also see the opaque ones very Beach. well, and you can see the shine on them too. And wow, we actually have a reaching here from Sophia on the 4-7, so this is, should, would look like a very obvious way, right? Because we can see what the tiles are, but they actually can't tell if Sophia already has the 4-7 or if she's waiting somewhere around the 4 of bamboo. That's right, because Sophia does have five normal tiles in her hand. She can disguise the weight. It's quite possible she could have the normal 4 or the normal 7 pin, and so would not be waiting there. There are a couple interesting sort of ramifications of having only one copy of each tile being normal. So we can see how Pio has a pair of 6 so on the right here. And we can see one 6 so across in Mr. Hat's hand. That means there's only one 6 so left. And because Sophia has it in her hand here, the normal 6 so she knows that Pio does not have the triplet of the 6 so And of course, Mr. Hat does not have the pair 
which means six Pio must be using the six L as a pair right now, and Mr. Hat drops it out of not being used, which means Pio is most likely going for a seven pairs hand. It could be very Ooh. interesting. Yeah, that could be very interesting because if Pio has the pairs to back up the sound. Um, it would be hard to tell, but now they just discard a pair, so maybe they're not going for that. It's hard to tell. That's right. It's Follow possible up. that Pio is folding, or perhaps he could be waiting on the 4-4 four, four and 6-6 six, six as his final wait for a 4-6 pin wait. Hmm. But because we can also see the normal 5 so here, we know Pio does not have 4-5-6 so. Hmm, that's true, because since all the other ones are transparent, we would see it in Pio's hand. That's right, and here comes and the 5-so. And I guess also whoever has the 4 and 7, uh, the, the normal 4 and 7 pin, they would be able to know that Sophia doesn't have them, so she must be waiting Pimp. on them. That's right. That's... But she still gets the Tempai payment. She gets uh, three, gonna get 3,000 points here, 1,000 from everybody, and the Rishi stick does stay on the table for the next hand. That's right. So, of course, your regular Mahjong skills still come into play, your ability to defend, you can still use players' discard piles to know which tiles are safe against them, and you can still play efficiently in order to make your hand tempi as soon as possible. How- Oh my! Sophia here had the white dragon in her hand at the start, the opaque one, so nobody knew she had it, and then right after it, she could see it, then nobody else had the oh, the white dragons, right, that are Dora, bonus points, and she could actually know that she can wait on them to try and get another one because they, there were three on the wall. She actually drew the other one. That's right, and in a situation like this, when you only see one transparent Dora, for example, looking at Pio, looking at Sophia, you're always wondering, does the player have the second one? Should I discard it? And of course, Pio doesn't have the normal Dora in his hand, so he's got to be scared that Sophia has it. Of course, he tries to get it out before Sophia finds her second Dora, but she already has it, and now the dealer has four Han. That's almost a Mangan on its own. Yeah, so, yeah, like you said, this is already, I mean, this is a very good hand already in normal Mahjong, but in Washizu Mahjong, you also have this, it's kind of like a false sense of safety um, when you can see some of the tiles. You think maybe they're not Tampai, maybe you think it's one way that they're waiting, but you actually don't know. It could be so many possibilities, right? That's right. Sophia is actually Tempai now, waiting on the four pin. But here is the other aspect of Washizu Mahjong that you can pay attention to. Not only can you use the transparent tiles to defend against Eesh. your opponents, you can also use them to help you determine what is left in the wall. Sophia ah. may be waiting on the 4-pin here, but all three transparent 4-pins are visible in other players' hands right now. You can see Pio has one, and Mr. Hat has two. Mr. Hat has reached, which means that those 4-pins will never come out of his hand. So Sophia is going to have trouble finding the last 4-pin. And of course, the last 4-pin is the normal opaque one, which means the players could have it already. Mm, that's true. And we see here Thursday does declare con. Maybe they're getting closer to the by They have the nine month that became the new Dora in their hand, so maybe maybe they have something that we don't know about. That's right. This is going to be very interesting, I think. Of course we do have a Richie on the table from Mr. Hat. Um gotta watch out for that too. It's really a minefield here. Almost like how Ashiza said it. That's right. Thursday with the con does not quite look tempai, even though they did con after the Ricci, so this could be a very dangerous situation for all the other players at the table. Not to mention the dealer has three Dora and the White Dragon. We've got a second reach on the table, so that means at least three players aren't tempai. Oh wow, and this is actually pretty scary for Sophia, even though she has the, the White Dragon tri triplet that is all shiny. Still gotta be watch out. That's right. So if we're looking here, it's pretty hard to determine what Pio's weight is. If I had to guess, Pio might be going for seven pairs again, but it is possible that he has a regular looking hand. We know that he cannot have more than two Easts in his hand, and he did not win on that East, because only one copy of the East can be opaque. 
So, mm, you're right. Yeah. I wonder what the sound is then. So if we do I a little we look, a look, that's our privilege as the spectators. Indeed, Pio is waiting on seven pairs, and this wait is yeah. so hard to read because it's Ooh. on a normal tile. Oh, and you caught it right there. The Ron, the seven pairs, Richie Ron. But uh, it's only 3200, no uh, hidden Dora. Yeah, two chances to get the Uradora there, but misses on both. And now let's hide the hands again so we can actually feel like we're playing Washizu Mahjong once again. It's kind of interesting that even though we're spectators, we get this... Um, I mean, it's almost when we're spectating like this, even though we can't see everyone's hands, we kind of can, and that's kind of cool that even as spectators, we get that feeling that we're in the game. That's right. It's pretty interesting. And now Pio again with four pairs, maybe seven pairs of the lucky hand. Ooh, I like seven pairs too. That's I, true. I, I can vouch for that hand. <laughs> <laughs> seven pairs is actually very strong. Pair weights in general in Washizu Mahjong are very nice because you can wait on one of your normal tiles, which means that other players do not have the same information that they would if you were using your transparent tiles in a weight. Ooh, but Pio here draws the triplet of the Red Dragon, so now maybe this end will be a bit different. Yeah, I can't actually the call this for Tenpai. Okay, so call there it. is a Tenpai here. And people might be very scared now of these yeah, pins yeah. because, oh, I was going to say it could be a three-sided weight, but Pio yeah. just gets the quick win there as the dealer. So they're going to get 2,000 points and going to keep their dealership, so they get to go again. That's right. Ichihime here, standing up against Akage and Washizu. I think I think uh, Thursday there may have thought that Pia was not Tempa yet and had to take her chance before it's too late. But mm. indeed it was too late. Ichihime too fast on that one with the open call. I feel like that's a very Ichihime hand too. The, the Tanya, the, the, the Yakuhai only hand to ruin your, <laughs> your hand. That's right. And we can see here, by looking at the other player's hands, just by looking at the transparent tiles, it does look like not many players are actually close to Tempai. So you can also sort of judge the speed of a round by looking at how connected your opponent's tiles are to each other as well as your own. Mm, I don't know though, Thursday here has so many bamboo tiles, maybe they have the opaque west as well, and that could be a very deadly hand. That's so right. Dora too. Red Dragon and Anne half flush that's that's a dangerous hand. Yeah, looking at Thursday's hand, it could be Tempai already. Pio risking it though. Is Pio also too late? No, Thursday's at least not waiting on that tile. That is a really good tile for Thursday to draw though. Maybe this makes her Tempai. Pio here deciding to keep the, the con of fours. Maybe trying to use it as a triplet and a sequence. That could be nice. That's right, especially when you have a 3-4 connected to the rest of your 4s like that. If you con the 4, you isolate your 3 on there, which means you cannot use the 2-5 to make a run, a sequence. So it can be dangerous to con the 4 in that situation. Uh, and also the con button showing up every round, it must be so difficult for Ichihime seeing that button to not click it in order to be more efficient. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if Ichihime is really known for her patience and uh, <laughs> ability to, yeah, to hold back. Interesting, Sophia here does cut Ooh. the 9. The nine oh my goodness, so many triplets here for, for Pio. This could be a nice hand. Yeah, this could be four concealed triplets. Then it's probably okay to do the con, right? <laughs> I think in that case, yeah. So, see here? Yeah, the three so looks pretty dangerous to discard if Pio is going to go down that route. Three so yeah, always Thursday. a very dangerous tile. Beach. Thursday did end up drawing the other west, but oh, okay. So there's an opportunity here for Pio. Sophia. Just gotta be very careful. That's right, Sophia with a very courageous Richie, throwing down the normal 5 sill. I wonder if Thursday's Tempai after all. She did discard 2 Dora from her hand. It's gonna be very interesting. Oh, Ooh, so we see here, oh, pr probably Overflow in the bamboos. Um, I wonder if Thursday's ready yet, because this could be very exciting. It's a big hand. Oh no, the triplet of the West discarded. The uh, third Dora, pretty hard. so sad. And in the end, just like uh, Ichihime, it looks like 
Pio's hand is going to be Tanya only. <laughs> <laughs> and Sophia, though, is in Rishi. I wonder what her weight is. Could be anything with five opaque tiles. Yeah, with five normal tiles, it's very difficult to discern the weight on this hand. Ooh, and Thursday draws another bamboo. What are these draws? I'm... Actually, discarding more bamboos. The ones are being discarded here now. So that's that's the only pair we could see from Thursday's hand. And she now takes a pair of five so instead. Ooh, and here's standby for Pio. And yeah. I wonder if Thursday discarding that oh, uh, that transparent to if she has the opaque one actually. Could be. Could be. And now Pio using the con in order to try and get to Tempai again, but does not find the Tempai tile. Really afraid of discarding the bamboos, which does make sense against Thursday's hand. She's been swapping tiles around for so long that it feels like either she's defending against the Richie or she must have been Tempai and just changing it around. Ooh, and here we get to see the Tempais 5 and 8 and 6 and 9. Well, so Pio dodged, dodging a bullet there from Sophia. If, uh, if they had gone for the Tempai, they would have gotten hit. That's right. Ichi, Ichihime showing discipline here and showing that she can compete with Akagi and Washizu. Still in the lead going into East 3. We've got two more dealers. We've got Mr. Hat's dealer and we've got Thursday's dealer. And then we will have a champion. So let's see if Washizu here, actually in last place, can pull back after being dealer. We're gonna have to do some work here, but Washizu is known for his extreme luck, so let's see. That's let's right. see Mr. Hack can channel that, you can't, that big render. there. You can't give Washizu a chance. And here comes a normal 8 so. So now, Mr. Hat has a pair of 8 so, but the other players don't know. It's touching the 7 so Dora. So that's gonna be interesting to see how he uses that 7 8 8 shape there. Mm -hmm. So there's a very big incentive, of course, to get the door, especially when you're dealer, but they could run into some issues here. They, need, they do need to win this hand to keep their dealership. That's right, and we can note, interestingly, Sophia had 3, 4, 5, so all transparent and chose to discard the 5, so. So perhaps Sophia has the normal 2 or 5, so already. Interesting to think about there when you're thinking about which tiles will help you out. Very interesting discard indeed. I see the, the two and three mon in Sophia Sand. Maybe they they're trying to go for the mixed triple sequence in the two three four. Could be. That's right. And Pio as well having the three four pin transparent or sorry Thursday with the three four transparent pin discarding the transparent four pin. Uh, Mr. Hat. That's right. Mr. Hat waiting on the one four pin. We'll have to take that into account as well as. He is running out of tiles for that weight. In fact, maybe the two pin weight could be better, but no, indeed, the two pins are all gone as well. Well, at this point, you know, it, it, always, it always happens, right? You discard a tile, nothing is going to be useful, and then you draw a pair of it, and then draw another pair and discard it. At this point, Eight. you could have gone for seven pairs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sophia gets into Tempai, though, and reaches here. We can see the two, three mon transparent in the hand as well as a six mon transparent in the hand and a couple eights as well but with six normal tiles it's a little difficult to discern exactly what she's waiting for so many so many normal tiles it's hard to, to see like you said but mr hand here playing with shizu getting those lucky draws right after the richie it almost feels like an enemy moment that's right Mr. Hat's still two away from Tempai here, though. Make that one away. Washizu's luck. Washizu's luck coming together. Can it all come through? Can Washizu pull through here? The perfect draw. This hand could be uh, a pinfu and it could actually be pretty valuable. That's right. Especially as dealer here with two Richie sticks on the table. Even a third one from a previous draw. This hand is going to be a big turning point in this game. Yeah, whoever wins this hand will have a pretty big advantage, I feel. I mean, with two Richies, see what happens. That's Pio has right. to make a discard. And okay. it's interesting here. If it does go to draw, will Mr. Hat be Tempai in order to keep his dealership? Ooh. But it doesn't go to draw, and on the door of this card, Wanjiro, being played by Thursday, gets the win, and let, oh, the Uda 2 makes it a Mangan. It's such a big hand. That's right, Wanjiro's luck outpacing Washizu's luck here. 
Wanjiro using his own his own luck powers. Oh, and look at this hand. Oh, that's pretty interesting hand that Mr. Had with two Dora and so many pairs too. That's right. And we see four pairs from Thursday in the dealer position as Wanjiro. On the right, Sophia's got an interesting hand, but it's almost all transparent, so we can see that she has three different honors, and only one of them can be paired up at most, because Sophia only has one normal tile across the table. We got a pair of Norris and a West. Pio being the West player probably would not cut the West if he had the pair, so mm. could probably assume the, the other Wests are still out there somewhere. That's right. And Thursday here, um, being in this two away from, from seven pairs hand, you can use the transparent tiles very much to your advantage by looking at what tiles um, people have, because since you only need pairs, you can simply see what tiles people have in their hand, and if there are too many of those tiles in others, hands, then you can just discard that and try to go for another one. That's right. That's actually another bonus of the seven Boom. pairs hand because it can choose to really use whichever tiles it wants you can see which tiles are being held and maybe which tiles are likely to come out later so you can roam Boom. someone for seven pairs what it Mine, looks... this is looking this is looking like the anime when uh so a player this card is a tiles knowing that it's gonna be fun and we're gonna see here if what she's gonna make a comeback with this hand yeah, that's right. Though this Battle of Clairvoyance is not a 2v2 mode, it sure feels like it at this point. What well, she's <laughs> with two big calls. We've got a Richie from Ichihime, both players trying to get this win in East for a very tense situation. Mm, but if you think about this positionally, uh, Thursday is in first. So as long as Mr. Hatch doesn't want a hand that's too big off of her, then it's okay, right? Because they'll be in first still yeah but being down 12,600 normally a mangan sumo would be short but thanks to pio's richi stick on the table a mangan sumo from mr hat now wins the game for him with that extra thousand points in fact even if it's not fully mangan if it's a four han 30 fu hand for 7900 that is still enough well we're, i guess we're just gonna have to see I mean, Mr. Hat does seem like they have a Tanya hand. Could be all triplets, we're gonna see here. And Pio as well isn't Richie, so Thursday actually uh, in a bit of a tough situation here. And draws the last Dora. This one is normal though, and it does fit into her hand. Throws it anyway though. Ooh, so I guess they're still committed to playing defense. It's a very tough situation. You don't want to get rolled and fall all the way down into third. That's right, it is true, because Mr. Hat called the Dora from Pio, that two pin was safe against Pio's Ricci. But, it could have been Mr. Hat's way. Very interesting all around. And Mr. Hat, even after having called twice, still has four normal tiles, so it's very hard to tell what Mr. Hat wants, actually. That's right, but one thing about knowing that he's got four normal tiles, because there's only one copy of each normal tile, we know that there's no pair in those normal tiles. So those normal tiles will have to be some sort of sequence in order for Mr. Hat to be Tempai, or he has to pair up or triple up his transparent tiles using those normal tiles. And because Thursday sees the normal seven mon here, she knows Mr. Hat does not have another 7 Mon in Gee. hand, which means mm. he has got to have some sort of sequence shape there if he's in Tempai. Mm, but I also noticed that the, the normal 9 Mon has been discarded, so he can't have that either. So much information that you can use to your advantage. I imagine the skill ceiling must be super high for this game mode. That's right, and it looks like we may end without- Oh! <gasps> oh! Oh, really? A Pio with the last tile on the wall draws it. Ichihime with the lock. I told you. Richie... I believe <laughs> 5, in. I believe in Ichihime's unbreakable spirit. And in fact, both Mahjong Soul compatriots here showing that they're ready to compete in this collaboration. Ichihime coming out on top, just beating out Wanjiro there in East 4, the Oras, the last hand of the round. Washizu coming ahead of Akagi here for third and fourth. And that's the way the cookie crumbles here.
Oh, so very interesting match there. We got to see a very epic comeback by Ichihime, winning on the very last tile of the last round. So, wow. Congrats, Vio, playing Ichihime. That's right. And I would like to thank all of the players for helping us demonstrate this new Battle of Clairvoyance, Washizu Mahjong. Thanks yeah, to... Yeah, thank you so much. That's right. P.O. Thursday, Mr. Head and Sophia. Unfortunately, due to our time limits here at the stream, we will not be able to demonstrate Yami Mahjong for the live stream. However, for more information on all of that and everything related to the collaboration, please make sure to follow the Mahjong Soul social media at, on Twitter at Mahjong Soul underscore EN, Facebook at Mahjong Soul EN, and the Discord community is at discord.gg slash Mahjong Soul. Ooh. That's right. Man. Well, time really flew, right? We announced so many things. We saw so many exciting uh, collaboration details, the characters, the outfits, the game mode, the voice actors, everything. And I'm so excited. That's right. I think there's only one thing we forgot. Um, I think it's kind of important. Oh, oh. what is it? Oh, what is it? Of course. I'm sure everyone wants to know when these characters and collaboration events, modes, will be able to be played. Ooh, right, I've seen people asking in chat, let's see. Alright, so the collaboration will be live on October 27th to November the 16th, UTC minus 7 time for the English servers. So. Ooh. It will be in about one week from now, and I think it's going to be a hard week for a lot of our viewers. Oh, and for me too. I, I, I mean, I, I want to play this just as much as you guys. Yeah, we need we need the patience of Ichihime in that game, seeing all the con button every time and staying patient in order to wait for the good hand. And we need to be patient and wait for the collab. It will start shortly. I can't wait. It's going to be difficult. Those cool decorations, those new outfits, and even the voice actors, Mr. Sukeyama and Mr. Ha Hagiwara, both here, both lending their voices to their respective characters. It's going to be great. Oh, I can't wait. And I'm going to keep watching that video to get some of the luck from the voice actors. I'm going to just try my best. That's right. Roll and for the characters. If, if they give you they give you the luck for the characters, and we wanted to give you our luck, so we'll give you our luck to get those Knight of Legends decorations, so you can really deck out your mat and your tiles in luxurious fashion. Speaking mm -hmm. of luxurious fashion, what you can do in the meantime is enter the Mahjong Soul and the Kagi Genius Who Descended Into the Darkness collaboration giveaway because that will be opening today. Three winners will each receive a Washizu Mahjong set. Holy shrink wrap there, those nice tiles. You've got the Akagi and Washizu on the box. It's branded. It's got a little rule book in there to learn to play Washizu Mahjong. And in order to enter, follow and retweet or share this giveaway post from Twitter at Mahjong Soul underscore EN or from Facebook at Mahjong Soul EN to qualify for the giveaway. The giveaway does end on the 27th, which is about the time that the event starts. So make sure to get this done before you get Akagi in game. That's right. All right. And now, just to make sure we don't miss any of the social media, make sure to follow. We mentioned the Twitter at Mahjong Soul Yen and the Facebook at Mahjong Soul Yen, but also the Discord, discord.gg slash Mahjong Soul, because from the staff here, lucky draw events are done fairly regularly. So to stay up to date on others that may happen, in the future, keep following the official Twitter, Facebook, and Discord. Right, and you can also play with the community there on the discord.gg slash MajungSoul. And we've played quite a bit there, I've met some really cool people, so definitely do join, it's quite fun. That's right, and last but not least, we'd just like to thank everyone involved in the production today. The Reach Mahjong of New York staff, we've got our producer, Luke Morgan, behind the scenes, getting everything ready. 
our lovely MC, Iron TV, here with me. Aw, oh, thank you. And our lovely streamer, Tips and Tricks. Thank you, thank you. And both of us commentating the Mahjong game for today. As well as our players, some were here to help practice and get our players ready for the stream. We have got Thursday, Sofrid, Andrew Everett, Molly Pio, Andres, Joe Trahedron, Konata Akemi, Bryce, and Gian. And all of the pets of the staff that are there to provide support, you can see their names on stream now. All right, so I think that's really it. There's so much, but oh, the collab, the characters, the voices, the outfits, the decorations. I yeah, look... there's so much. I hope you guys are looking forward to it just as much as us. That's right. I look forward to seeing you on the Mahjong table. You may be able to face off against me too, but I can't promise anything. As well as at the next YoStar stream. So, from all of us here at Yostar Cat Food Studios and Reach Mahjong of New York, thank you for watching, and see you next time!